What's up, Disc Golf fans? Derek and Chris back at it again, bringing you round two front nine coverage of the 2020 Gibson County Challenge. Uh, today we are, uh, this is going to be the second round of the day. It is a wet one, so I hope you are in for a treat. Yeah, round one you thought was wet. This is probably the wettest round we've ever filmed in. And to be honest, I'm surprised our cameras still work after this because you're about to see a torrential downpour on a pretty fun course, actually. So it's a par 54 birdie or die. We're going to be at Hobstop Township Disc Golf Course here in Indiana. And a special thank you to the Hampton Inn in town here, as well as Dads for Disc Golf and the Tourism Board for Princeton or Gibson County, that is. Yeah, so this area is going to be hosting the 2022 Amateur World Championship. So this is some preview of some open players playing on these courses that we're going to see. For our card today, we have an exciting one. We have a lefty, Aaron Walther, 10 down right now, shot the hot round in round one at Country Club. We have Paul Oman, Zach Kemmer, and Nathaniel Romans rounding out this card here. So still pretty tight, a lot of golf to play, but like I said, this round is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> so as you can see, it is a par 54 course, so we, everything is going to be par three. Uh, we start off here uh, with a little bit of a dry spell. Yeah, we but started, it is coming soon. <laughs> we started off dry. We're going to start on hole one, par three, obviously. At 303 feet, this played as the hardest hole on the course. As you can see, just a straight shot literally the entire way. Don't let the par 54 fool you. This is a very technical and tight course. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't have finesse for your shots, that is going to be something you're going to find yourself scrambling quite a bit. Aaron, the lefty. I love seeing a lefty. is a fellow lefty. And he just hits that last one he needed to miss, finds himself to the right. No stranger to Paul. He was on our coverage during round one. Team Inavun hits an early one. We have Zach with Prodigy. It looks like he's going to go with a forehand. I like the forehand play. If you can get to the left of that tree that he just did, unfortunately hit that one. I think the same one Aaron hit. And that's looking good. Daniel with a really nice shot. And not, a, not a terrible reaction. That's going to give him a little bit of an obstructed approach, but should be manageable for at least par. Yeah, easy three. So Paul hits the ceiling. He's dropping right on the fairway, but that's going to be a tough par save. Oh, wow. Zach with an early hit as well. And like I said, this played as the hardest hole. It played about a half a stroke over par uh, compared to the rest of the holes. Giving it a good bit. Uh, kind of faded out a little early there. Paul's going to have to settle for his bogey. He's there and for his birdie. He'll be able to clean that up. Then with latitude, we have Nathaniel as he's giving that a good bid. So Zach, the, for his par save... A little wobbly out of the hand. Yeah, kind it, just, of, it didn't look like he had very much control on that shot. It's like a half bit. As Paul, the professional he is, cleans up that bogey save. Kind of the theme on here. Every good round starts with the bogey. Aaron's in for his par. Yeah, we, we knew at this point the rain was coming. The radar showed a lot of rain, and we just basically were geared up for it. Yeah, already bagged up from round one for our gear. We're going to move into hole two, 245 feet. We're going to have a right-to-left finishing hole here. So see people probably throw a mid-range here, something that's going to flip up, kind of carry straight for a little bit, and then still fade there at the end. Um, once again, very tight. If you hit something early, you're scrambling for your par. And hard to get par when you hit early. Yeah, and when you're when you're teeing off here, it is pretty easy to go too deep and not make that turn. So you want to definitely throw something that's going to allow you to fade early. Just like that. Gets up a little bit. Carries. Yeah, like and that right there is textbook. Yep, great ground play. Nestled right up. Should be an easy tap in for birdie. 
Paul a little tighter, but this is looking good. Skipping up. Big Ooh. flail. That did, that did not hit me. Looked like it hit me right in the chest, but... Looks like he might have went with a fairway, something that had a little bit more ground play. Zach, his is going tight. He's going to go short and left. He should have a putt from there, though. Oh, no. Huh? It's going to be a tester for par. Oh, yeah. All right. Nice birdie. As you can see, the umbrellas are out now, so we did officially get the start of the rain. Aaron for his par save. Looks like he's about circle's edge. Oh! Yeah. Barely any chain. I'm saying that, that was the it's most quiet. quiet. Yeah. That was the most <laughs> quiet par save. I don't even think he hit a chain there. That was insane. Paul, probably about 20. It's for his birdie. There we go. Good way to bounce back after taking the bogey. Don't forget that. Don't forget your umbrella, Paul. Really, the shot of the, the hole here. Daniel, it's a beautiful shot. Tapping birdie. We're going to jump in the hole three. Very short, 212 feet. Very attackable. Basically, we're going to see some people throw straight and then just have a slight little fade here to the left. A lot of people kind of end up into that left foliage over there and they kind of give themselves an instructed putt. Um, it's also good to kind of just stay straight the entire time, give yourself like a 20 footer. Right. Ooh, finds a tree. But like I was saying, that was heading right over to that left spot. Kind of have to putt over like a downed tree log. Each turn. And this is definitely something where, given the conditions, you really want to just touch your shot down there because grip is going to most certainly be an issue. And because it's such a short hole, you're not going to really need to muscle it down there. It's really all about control. So short and early, and then Aaron left the shot. He just needed that to fade a little quicker for him. So we'll see if he's obstructed behind that log. Zach just lays up. He's going to take his three. Very easy hole overall. Not really any bogeys. Oh, just a little low. Aaron, yeah, pretty high, but he gets it. First green for him for the round. Sound gets me every time. We'll have some cleanups. Backs in for his par. See, so yeah, even if you hit early, I mean, honestly, it's pretty easy to just lay up, take your par. Paul's just finding everything, bogey, birdie, and par. So yeah, I was just going to comment on, on the uh, the colorful arrangement we have on his scorecard. All right, hole four. This is a pretty tough hole as well at 283 feet. We're going to have a fairway that has this nice little bend to the left and then this sharp dog leg down to the right, ending a little downhill. You have to throw a very touchy shot here to actually reach the green. We'll see if we see any flex forehands from the righties. Um, Aaron, we can see if he's turned something over and see if he can get something down there. There it is. Good flex. Oh, wow. That did not want to come back because he's kind of almost on another green. Yeah, he. it does look like he may be pin high from there just in a lot of shul. This is the other play, just kind of, well... Throw kind of a hyzer shot and just kind of end up at the top of that hill and just give yourself a putt if you want to run it. There is a creek down behind the green. I believe that is casual. It is casual as Paul finds an early tree. That is not a good spot to be. If you're over there to the right, you are very pinched off to get around that dog leg.
just trying to provide as much cover for their plastic as possible. Just gotta stay dry. We have a lot of weird releases probably with this rain coming down. Everyone's grip. So that shot, it was hard to tell, but it does kind of nestle into the left of the screen. So he's gonna find himself a little short. Let's pause. Just trying to go through everything. Same with Nathaniel as he's gonna do an overhand, kick down right onto the fairway. Should probably save Bogey from there. but good shot from Zach. He should be able to save his par. Looks like Nathaniel's going to give the bid. Paul's going to be taking a bogey as well. Or par, I'm sorry. I thought that was Paul that shot. Boogie. Oh. Oh no. Right through. Oh, it's gotta hurt. Taking the dub. Zach for bogey. That was Aaron that had that layup, so he'll be getting his car. So a wider range of scores here, a lot of separation. It's Aaron and Paul keeping pace. Ha! What colors are this? Okay. All right, we're going to move into hole five, 220 feet. We're going to have a straight shot, and then we're going to have this dog leg down to the right. So it seems like this course really sets up for a lot of left to right shots, which is really nice to see as a lefty, uh, personally. But very short, so something straight, even if you land right in the woods there you'll give yourself a 35 footer it should be an easy par if you do hit early though <laughs> then you're gonna have some trouble i would say this is probably where the rain was almost the worst yeah and, and this part of the course is is pretty deep in the woods there so you're pretty secluded from the rest of the field that actually worked out really good for paul yeah it looks like everyone's throwing a little too deep Something else that you'll notice about this course is a lot of the greens are that are in the wooded areas are pretty tight. So you're going to have a lot of potential for obstruction. Yeah, it's straddle putts, things like that. As he it's going to inch up there. Yeah, that's a good shot. Himself a birdie look. This, this is, is a little pinch, so he's going to go up and over. Still leaves himself short because he clipped a little bit of branch, but again within range for par. And like I was saying, if you just even throw straight and get to right here, you give yourself a bid. Something circle two. To get aggressive with. Something you can at least hit metal from. Ooh, sneaky birdie from Aaron. Doesn't look like the weather is no, he's doing too much for Aaron. <laughs> playing really well right now. Nice birdie from Nathaniel as well. He was closer than I thought. I thought he was about circle's edge, but but at this point, I mean, these guys are soaked. I don't even think you really need an umbrella. I was pretty miserable at this point. I didn't even have a jacket <laughs> on. We're gonna move into hole six. This is a par three at 177 feet. One of the shortest holes on the course. Very touchy. Very straight. A lot of trees to hit along the way. Aaron's gonna go with something on a nice little Anheuser and just kinda skip right up there. Daniels is looking good as well, actually yeah. coming in pretty hot, but good shot from him. Nice tree. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can see there's so many puddles at this point. Oh no. 
down. So that could have been way worse. So he's going to have a manageable approach from there. Zach just kind of flips that over. It's going to be a tough par save from there. He did throw already. Um, and at this point, he is commenting on the flashes and the thunder. Yeah, at this point, we were... We thought we saw lightning at this point, correct? Uh, I do believe so. Um, and close to this point, I believe, is when they decided to call it. However, we, we have could a not hear anything because of how hard it was raining. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually played two holes further after they called it. Yeah. So when the break was done, we did have to wait. Yeah, I think they called it at this point. And we were out here still playing. It's Aaron's... The rain's not stopping him, so he's putting up a good round. Daniel, other than that dub, is trying to keep pace. Looks like the weather's affecting Paul a little bit. And Zach's wheels are starting to fall off as well, so I'm sure everyone at this point really wants him to call it, but we continue to go. So we're going to go into hole 7, 185 feet. Another very, very tight hole, very technical. Right up on this little uh, hill here. The basket finished up. Probably see little turnover shots from these righties. Sets up for a lefty pretty well. I still can't get over how hard it was raining. This is probably the worst weather I've ever been in for a, a tournament. Yeah, and I think the uh, the worst part of all this was, well, one, I was getting over Lyme disease. The other part was this was my birthday. <laughs> so After having already filmed 18 holes. Yeah. So a two-a-day in the rain, post-Lyme, on my birthday. I do want to give a shout-out to Paul. Nice shot. Because um, he knew I was out there roughing it. So whenever he had a chance, he was able and kind enough to extend his umbrella for my use as well. So thank you, Paul. Zach's hitting something early, but he does get up there. He should be able to save his par. It's Paul had a really nice shot there. Hit his line perfectly. Ooh. It's caught up against that stump there, and it's going to leave him. Ooh. Tester, but he gets it. Yeah. Using the backboard. <laughs> that was a nice par save there from Nathaniel. Nice birdie from Aaron. He is on the move. Yeah, he is on the move. His style of play didn't really change with the weather either. Um, he just kind of stuck to his routine, didn't let it affect him, get into his mental game, and I think really that's the trick. Paul's able to get some green after taking the bogey, so he's going he's gonna to like that. Zach should be able to clean up. And it was at this point, I believe, that someone was waiting for us, and they actually came out and, and got us. So this was where we actually caught it. I think somebody on our card did find a mini on this hole. Yeah. That happened to be another card's lie. Um, and this was the hole that we had to wait and let two other cards play before we could get started yeah. post-break. Very interesting. We had about a 30-minute delay at this point. Come back out. Um, still raining, but no lightning or anything. It's hole 8 is going to be a very tight 262 feet. Basically, just got to hit your line here. Uh, if you don't, you're going to end up kicking somewhere. That actually was pretty good for him. Kept him on the fairway. But it is not good when you kick over to the left or the right on this hole. I'd say you probably want to be right, if anything. And Paul ends up over there to the right. Me, personally, I was to the left, and I did not enjoy it over there, so. This is going to go over to the right, but it should be an easy up and down. And, and grip is definitely an issue right now. Almost happens to him again, but... Ooh, he, he almost rung that up. <laughs> Going at it with a grudge. Yeah. Sometimes your best shots are when you're angry. 
It's going to be an easy par there for Aaron. Good bid. I mean, at that point, you're really not putting up the round you want. I mean, you don't have a lot to lose either if you're able to get through that early gap from that position and just place yourself up on the top of that hill. Why not? Paul lays up. And looks like he got a little more skip than he wanted, but he should be able to clean it. And that's a really good par save from Zach. I mean, hitting one of the early trees or even the building there, you still have 200 feet of woods that you have to go through. Looks like we're going to be seeing a par frame. Kind of coming back after our break. Because walking away without red on this course is good. Aaron's just really, really starting to run away. Yeah, putting up a good round. I think he even said at this point, he was like, I wish we didn't stop. I could have kept going. So we're going to move into hole nine, 318 feet. We have a double mando. Keep something very straight. A lot of people are probably going to end up right on this hillside over this casual creek. You really get something to flip over and come back. You can't end up on this hill and give yourself a two. Pretty tough shot overall. This hole played very hard for everyone. Yeah, if you don't... Oh, wow. There's a lot uh, of that, really. Yeah, I mean, that will... That's rolling in the right direction to give him an open look. Paul really high, but he's liking it. Finds some green, but still finds the green. So he's going to have about a 25-footer. Mm. So these left-to-right holes are actually set up for Paul really well. I mean, that's... The shot that's in his arsenal that he wants to throw. Zach just... I think he's really just overcompensating at this point um, and just throwing a lot of stuff right into the ground uh, or having it just slip out early. Which, I mean, it's hard not to do. Daniel finds something, man. Got iron leafed. Yeah. I thought that was going to make it through. Zach, he's, right, he's able, up there. He's gonna be able to take his bogey. Daniel, same from him. Nice recovery shot. Aaron giving it a bit. He finds some metal. That is OB though, so he does find himself in the OB. Paul with the two, though. Very nice from him. He's able to kind of get his round back together, I think, through nine if you're you're shooting under in these conditions. Well, and this hole right here is allowing Paul to start putting a little bit more pressure back on Aaron. Yeah, Zach with the plus three. Not out of the tournament at all, but Aaron giving it that bid and then taking the, the OB stroke. First blemish on the card. Still at three under, though. Daniel, kind of up and down at this point and the rain's still coming so that's going to be the end of round two front nine coverage we have Aaron sitting at 13 under Paul at 10 Daniel and Zach trying to keep pace at seven and six my game my name is Chris we're with Derek we are gatekeeper media how are you feeling about this I mean, now that the weather is uh, starting to slow down, I am feeling a little bit better, but I am ready to watch some more golf. So hopefully we have you back for the back nine. Big shout out to all of our Patreons. Thank you. You make what we do possible. And again, shout out to the Visitor Bureau for Gibson County, as well as Dads for Disc Golf.